going to be one voice that will calm that baby down. And it's that mama's voice. Why? Because for nine months it's been hearing mama talk. Even if that mama wasn't talking to that baby, it's been hearing mama's voice. See, the Bible says you were born of God. 1 John 4, 4 says you are born of God, little children. And greater is he that's in you than he that's in the world. You are born of him. It's very natural for children to recognize their parents' voice. It's very, very natural, and it's very, very normal for children to recognize their parents' voice. Well, you've been born of God. God is your father. So it should be very, very normal and natural for you to recognize his voice. Isn't it interesting that even as a parent and child, you know, you, you, you get to ra you're around each other so long, you could be in a crowd of people, and you could, you could hear lots of voices, but your child speaks, or your parent speaks, and you can pick that out? You, you, you can pick that voice out amongst a crowd. Why? Because you're in tune with that voice. You know that voice. And so that's what begins to happen as you begin to spend time reading the Bible. And, and you're, you're, you're hearing and picking up on his personality, his characteristics, his traits, uh, how he would say things, what he would do. So that when all these voices are around, you, you can distinguish that. So number one, you need to spend time reading your Bible. Reading the Bible with your children. Number two, you need to act like that hearing from God is normal and it's natural. Because Jesus said, it's normal. It's natural. You know his voice. Now in your mind, you may not be picking up, but you are a spirit being. And he is a spirit. And I'm telling you, you do know his voice. And so that's one of the, the, the daily confessions that we've made with Jake. You know, every time we, we, we lay him down to bed, Lacey prays with him, and then I'll come in there and I'll pray with him. And we've got this little confession we've been doing for years. I mean, since he was a baby. I mean, he's got it memorized and we say it all the time. But we included this piece about hearing from God in it. And we said this. And, and I would encourage you to say it along uh, for yourself and your kids. I'm quick. I'm sharp. I'm smart. I'm good looking. Come on, I give you a self-esteem boost. I'm good looking. Quick, sharp, smart, good looking, very rich. I'm a major blessing. I know the voice of God. And mighty miracles happen through my hands. I'm blessed and highly favored of the Lord and with man. That's a good little thing to say over yourself. You know, the Bible does say you, have, you will have what you say. But the other important thing is that, and that we, with us saying that with him, and him saying that, it's, it's renewing your mind and changing his mindset that hearing from God is normal. I do know his voice. So say that with me. I know the voice of God. I do know his voice. I know his voice. And so see, once you start making that change in your mindset that I do know his voice, then that puts you in a position to, to release your faith to start hearing his voice. Because if you don't think you can hear him, uh, you don't have nothing to release your faith on. So you need to establish that, that hearing from God is someone I know his voice. I know his voice. So the very first step is what? Read the Bible with your kids. Number two, do what? Act like hearing from God. It's normal. It's normal. It's natural. Number three, and this is a big one, you need to teach your children to be okay with stillness. To be okay with stillness. Look over at Psalms uh, chapter 46 and verse 10. I know many of you have heard this, but I want you to see it. I want you to have the reference, Psalm 46, 10. God says this, be still and know that I am God. Now, if you are like I am, this thing is almost like another appendage for me. My phone. I love my phone. I do so much work on my phone. I take notes on my phone. I get directions on my phone. I talk on my phone. I mean, I text like crazy. It, my, my thumbs can probably type faster now than all my fingers. I'm always on this thing. And, and if we're not careful in this world, the society that we're in, I mean, you're going to have stuff before your eyes all the time, have stuff in your ears all the time. You look at our kids today. This is in their face all the time and the headphones are in their ears all the time and it's constant just busy 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 isn't it interesting that God said it's in the stillness that you know me not in the busyness and then I could even take this away and just talk about me being busy I mean I'm the king of being busy I'm the king of multitasking while I multitask I mean I'm good at it 
And you don't get a whole lot accomplished while you're doing that. You get lots of things done. And take some time. But he said, be still and know that I am God. It's in the stillness that you begin to hear him, not in the busyness. Why? Because God is a spirit and you are a spirit. And he is going to talk to you in spiritual means. He's not going to talk to you brain to brain. He's not going to talk to you mouth to mouth, ear to ear. He's going to talk to you spirit to spirit. And so in order for you to hear from him, you're going to have to get to a point where you, you shut down your emotions and your mind and you learn to get still. You learn to get still. Jim Hockaday made this statement. Hey, if you don't know who that is, a good friend of mine. Uh, he was over at healing school at Rama for many years. He made this statement a couple of years ago and it really just, just resounded with me. And he said this. He said, God made the country, man made the city. And see, and in the city, it's busy, 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 and just, just noise and distractions all over the place. And in the country, it's just... Uh. Now, you know, Lacey is the animal lover. I could, I could give a rip about the animals. I just like being out there and the quiet. I mean, I love people, but I also love just me and just nobody else. Sometimes I think I would make a really good hermit. Just leave me alone. I'm by myself. And, and I will. I'll go out there. And for Lacey, it's relaxing just going out there and messing with the horses. I just like sitting on the porch and looking out and seeing nothing. Just trees and grass. And I mean, when we were, when we were in uh, Scotland last week, I mean, my gosh. I mean, I just sat there and just looked. And it was just so calming just seeing the hills and the countryside and the mountains and the sheep out there. There was just something relaxing about it. I, I'm not a, a hunter. I don't, I'm not really into it. Nothing wrong with it. I like to eat it. You can go kill it. I'm not really into it. But you know what? I like going and sitting out in the woods and just sitting there and just looking at the trees and hearing the wind blow. It's relaxing to me. It's calming to me. And it's in those times when I'm quiet, I begin to hear. One of the places that I hear him so well is in the shower. Because you know what? In the shower, I can't be doing this. I'm not listening. Nobody's talking to me. It's just me. And I'm just relaxing, and I'm relaxed. The hot water's hitting my head. I'm relaxed, and, and I begin to hear. One of the other times I hear from God so very well is the, the very first, first moment I begin to wake up. So I always keep my phone right there. I used to keep a notepad. But soon, you know that moment when you wake up, you're awake, but you're not really awake? Like your brain hasn't really kicked in. And you're not being reminded about all the reminders and things you have to do. Like you first wake up and, and, and you're awake, but you're not really awake and doing anything. And I begin to hear him. And I reach over and I begin to, to type and write down things. So I've got some, some of the greatest revelations and, and insight into some stuff. And also in those times when I'm spending time just praying. Why? Because in those times I'm quiet. I may have some, some music playing in the background, just some soft stuff. Uh, but it's just me and it's him and no TV and no phone and no, no none of that. It's in those quiet times that I begin to know him. It's in those still times I begin to hear from him. Not in the busyness of life. But the thing is that if you learn to hear from him in, in those quiet times, even in the busy times, if you maintain that, that fellowship with him, even in the busy times, you can still learn to hear from him. That's why, you know, several months ago, and I've talked about this for a couple of years, but I've encouraged people because I'm doing this myself. I'm doing this myself a as a daily reminder to just every few minutes, every 10, 15 minutes, 20 minutes, just stop. Take a moment and stop. And just, just stop and say, Father, I thank you that you're with me. <sighs> You've never left me. You've never forsaken me. You're always with me. Just, just, just stop. I mean, if you're at work, I mean, if you get up and go to the restroom, you go in the stall and just breathe and just... Father, I thank you that you're with me. Like recognize him. Increase your awareness that he is with you. So that things are very natural and things are very normal. And, and you're learning to, to even in the busy times to kind of have a still moment. Still moment. So he said, be still and know that I'm God. So you need to teach your children how to enjoy the quiet times and be okay with quiet times. We have music going on all the time at our house and TV and this and that. But you know what? There needs to be some times where there's just some quiet. And you don't have to have all the stuff going on just to keep things going. Remember we talked about this a few weeks ago that Satan, he can't defeat you, but he can distract you. 
And it doesn't have to be bad stuff to distract you. It could be good stuff. It could be normal stuff. It could just be just normal, natural, everyday life. But you've got to have some times where it's quiet. You've got to have some still times. And like most moms, I mean, Lacey's like most moms. I mean, something going on all the time. I know when Jake was, was a lot younger, I mean, she was the one that was home with him. And I would come home and she would just be like, here. I need some sanity. I need some time. You may be somebody, I mean, you're busy nonstop from morning to, to, to evening. But you know what? You still do have some times where you can have some peace and some quiet. It's called the bathroom. Go in the bathroom. And you're the only person in there. You shut the door. And while you're there, you can enjoy some time, you and God. And somebody comes and knocks on the door. You say, I'm busy. I'm taking care of business. <laughs> it ain't a lot. And you don't have to be doing business number one or two. It could be business number three, hearing from God. And people won't leave you alone, flush it every couple of times, and just continue just to pray, <laughs> worship, and spend time with God, and coach a couple of times, and leave me alone. Nobody's going to want to mess with you in there when you're busy. But you need to enjoy those times. You need to, if, if you don't have them, you need to create those. And it doesn't have to be long periods of time. Smith Wigglesworth, a man, I mean, documented over 20 people raised from the dead in his life and his ministry. And someone asked him one time, said, how long do you pray? And he said, no more than 10 minutes. He said, but I never go more than 10 minutes without praying. In other words, it was this constant, you know, fellowship continual here. But you got to have those, those still times. And my concern for this generation in our day to day is we are living in a day where it is like extremely dangerous. And there's lots of junk going on in schools and in the communities and cities and in churches and stuff. There's lots of stuff going on. And there's lots of things that the devil has out there going after our kids. And yet at the same time, there's all of these distractions there for our kids. And as our kids are growing up, if they're just constantly used to just busy, 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 busy and, and all this, there's never going to be a time for them to create and develop those habits of hearing from God, spending time with God. See, it's all about the distractions. If he can just get you distracted, you're done. It's one of my greatest weaknesses. I am a workaholic on steroids. And I have to constantly pull back and remind myself, hey, this can wait for just a little bit. Because if I'm not careful, if I don't watch it, I mean, literally, I could go days and days and days without reading my Bible, without praying, nothing, because I've got all this stuff i got to do. And even in, in the busy times, it may not be bad stuff. I'm not doing any stuff that's bad. I'm doing good stuff. But I can, if I don't watch it, the good stuff can get in the way of the primary thing. Me and him. So number one, you need to read your Bible with your kids. Number two, you need to act like hearing from God is normal. Number three, you need to teach them to, to learn to be okay with stillness. To be okay with quiet. To be okay with quiet. Real quickly, let's get to this. Uh, this fourth one. Number four, uh, look at John chapter 4 and verse 24. We, we've already mentioned this to a degree, alluded to it. John 4, 24, Jesus said this. He said, God is a spirit and they that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. And so what we find how, here is that God, he is a spirit. And if you are a spirit, then he's going to speak to what? He's going to speak to you through spiritual means. It's not going to be this thing of, you know, these ears. Hey, Chad, it's God. Because that's the way most people are expecting it. But no, he's going to speak to you through your spirit. And so this right here, guys, if you are a spirit being, which you are, the Bible says that you're a spirit and you have a soul, which is your mind, will, and emotions, and you live in a body. So if you are a spirit and God is a spirit, it should be more natural and more normal for you to hear from God than to hear a dog bark. It should be no, more normal for you to hear from God because you're a spirit than to hear natural things. It should be normal, more normal for you to hear from God than to hear you know, a car honk its horn. It should be more normal. Why? Because you're a spirit. And God is a spirit. So spiritual things should be, supposed to be, should be more normal to you than natural things. Why is it the reverse? 
because we have grown up in a society, we've grown up in a world, and, and many of us have grown up in churches where we're taught to hear and experience the natural things over the spiritual things, that the spiritual things come at this level and the natural things are here. But you are not a body. You're a spirit. And so spiritual things should be more normal to you, should be more natural to you. So God's going to speak to you uh, through spiritual means. And so this is why if you look at 1 Corinthians, 1 Corinthians chapter 2 and verse 16, it says this, it says, we have the mind of Christ. And the reason this is so vitally important is because when God's speaking to you, it's going to be more of a knowing than hearing with your natural ears. Now there's times God has spoke audibly. He spoke so clearly and so audibly, loudly. I, I thought, and it's only happened like two times, I thought maybe somebody else heard it and they didn't. And it was just me. But the vast majority of the time, you're going to pick it up on the inside. It's a knowing so knowing. How many times have you done this? You, you, you've gone through life and you made a decision, something bad happened, and you said, man, I knew I shouldn't have done that. There was just something on the inside. I just, I knew I shouldn't have done that. I knew I shouldn't have turned that, that direction. I knew I shouldn't have gone down that street. I shouldn't have made that decision. I shouldn't have asked that girl out. I wasted a lot of money on time on shouldn't have. Anybody ever been there, done that? Yeah. I would have just been listening. But there, there's that thing on the inside. That's, it's a knowing on the inside. And so that's why, you know, when, when people say, well, is that God or is that me? It might be both. Because God, he's going to speak to you. And you think about it. And this isn't to get too deep or anything. But your spirit and your soul, your mind, they are connected. They're connected. And the only thing that's going to change about you when, you when you die and you go to heaven, the only thing that's going to change about you is your body. But your spirit and your, your mind, your soul, they are connected, will always be connected. And so many times when, when God speaks to you, it's almost going to seem like a thought. It's going to, it's going to be like a, a knowing on the inside. And so I, I began to see this a couple of years ago, especially in, in ministering in the lines of healing. There were some things that I, I would just say something or do something. And later on, I'd be analyzing it and thinking, well, was that God or was that me? And I began to realize, you know what? I'm picking up on his thoughts. I'm picking up on his desires. I have the mind of Christ. And so his thoughts should be my thoughts. So over in Psalms chapter 37, uh, I believe it's chapter 37. It says that God, he will give you the desires of your heart. And a lot of, a lot of times we, we put that in relation to, you know, asking God for things and it'll give us what we desire. And that's true. But there's also a piece of getting God's desires and God's desires becoming your desires. And you picking up on that and you asking for that. And it's not far-fetched because you see it over in John chapter 15. Jesus said, if my words abide in you and you abide in me, you ask for whatever you want. And it'll be given to you. So, so the thing is this, don't discount the thoughts and, and teach your children that, you know, ha, to, to learn to, to be, be uh, sensitive and, and living according to spiritual things, listening to their spirit, listening to their spirit. So Lacey's been really, really good at this with Jake and that when he's done something bad, when maybe he lost his temper or he did something he shouldn't have done and she'll ask him, she'll ask him this, well, what were you feeling on the inside? Before you did that, what were, you, what were you picking up on the inside in your spirit? What were you picking up? Did you know on the inside that you shouldn't have done that? And Jake's a great kid. And, and pretty much nine times out of ten, he's going to say, well, yeah. And so the question, the response to that would be, okay, then how come you didn't do that? And see, what you're doing is, and doing that, you're teaching your children to be spirit-ruled and spirit-led and not body-ruled and body-led. We want to follow what we're picking up in our spirit because God's going to speak to us. He's going to speak to the us, the real us, our spirit. And yet on, on the converse, it's not always about the bad stuff. It's also the good stuff. When your kid does something good, then that is where you, you, you come and, you, and that's a teaching moment and say, man, you heard God on that one. Where they're learning that they hear from God and you're affirming when, the, when they've heard and when they haven't heard. It's super easy. 
But too many times we do it on the negative. Oh, that was bad. You're, and don't sit there and say you're a bad kid. No, you made a bad decision, made a bad choice. You didn't listen to God. You didn't do what he was telling you to do. And see, if, if you get this in your mindset that I'm hearing from God, hearing from God's normal, hearing from God is natural, you can make that statement. And by making that statement, that's instilling into that child, God is speaking to you. God is speaking to you. And it's normal. And it's natural. How come you didn't do what God was telling you to do? If you were picking that up, that's God speaking to you. You should have done that. And when they do something right, man, that was God speaking to you. You got that one. And that starts instilling a confidence on the inside of them. I can hear from God. I can hear from God. And that's where people start getting in a position. They can start getting results in life. I'll never forget. It was, it was probably, I guess, about two, three months ago when Jake, uh, he was believing God for some stuff, for some money, for some things. And he had, he told Lacey on the way to church, he said, I feel like I'm supposed to sow uh, $40. That's a big deal for a 10-year-old. 40 bucks, man. And he did that. He, he got his money. He gave that. And you know what? When he left service that morning, somebody had given him, or two people ended up giving him like, like 40 or $60. And then that turned into somebody uh, giving him a check a few weeks later uh, for uh, $400. 10. I wish I would have known that when I was 10 years old. I'd been a lot further along than where I am now at 42. But, but our intention is this. If we can teach him to hear from God and to obey, he'll be unstoppable in life. And I'll never have to worry about him making bad decisions. See, your job as a mother, as a father, is not to worry about your kids. Your job is to get God on the inside of them and teach them to hear from him so that when any situation arises... Where they're in a position, they got to make a choice. They can make the right choice. Not just because they heard from you, they're hearing from him. And when they go off to college, you don't have to be worried about them making bad decisions. Because if we're training them right, when they get to that point, they've been hearing from God for a long time. And they know his voice. They know his voice. I guarantee you, when Jake goes off to college and me and, and, me and mama aren't around, that will be the last thing that I, I, I tell him and remind him after I say I love you. That remember... You know the voice of God. Make good decisions. Why? Because every, every bad decision was just not obeying what God was telling you to do. And then real quickly, last, we're out of time. This last one is this. 1 Corinthians chapter 14 and verse 2. <clears throat> he says this. He says, For whoever speaks in an unknown tongue, speaks in tongues, Praise in tongues, speaks not to men but to God, for no one understands or catches his meaning, because by the Holy Spirit he utters secret truths and hidden things. And so this fifth, this fifth piece is that this, you need to have your child, you need to get them to spend time praying in tongues, praying in the Spirit. Why? Because one of the benefits to praying in tongues, and people miss this all the time, one of the benefits is you're hearing from God. The Bible is very clear that the Holy Spirit is the one giving you the words. So when you're praying in the Spirit, you're picking up what He's wanting you to say and then you're saying it. That's a big revelation, big eye-opener to a lot of people. But it's the truth. When you're praying in the Spirit, when you're praying in tongues, you're hearing from Him. And then you're speaking what, what He wants you to say. Now the Bible is clear. It says you don't understand what you're saying. But what's happening is when you're praying, not only are you hearing from Him, but then you're also declaring some things and speaking some things out that God's wanting you to speak for your life and for other people. But, but the main benefit in, in what we're talking about here from hearing from God is that you're hearing from God. And that should be a confidence builder and boost to you. I'm hearing from Him. And you're keeping your tongue hooked up to spiritual things. And, and you're becoming more aware of Him on the inside of you. Because in, in this regard, you're working together. Working together, praying in the Spirit. And that's a whole other, you know, couple of teachings on its own. So, let's review real quick. Number one, five steps to teaching your kids how to hear from God. Number one is what? Read your Bible together. Read your Bible together. Number two is what? Act like hearing from God is normal. Number three, learn to be okay with stillness. They don't have to have a phone and music and TV in front of their face all the time. Learn to be okay with stillness. Number four, and we didn't, I probably didn't say this too clearly. Number four, emphasize living by your spirit. 
Emphasize living by the Spirit, not discounting your thoughts. And number five, spend time praying in the Spirit. Spend time praying in the Spirit. Does that help you? Yes. Very practical, very easy, very simple. Not very, you know, deep or anything like that. But if you do that, my gosh, you're setting your kids up for life. Amen. You're setting your kid, and you're creating a culture in your home, in your family, to be able to hear from God. Amen. Well, look, we don't like to go without doing this. If you're sitting here this morning, you're watching online, watching by TV, web, whatever, and you've never made Jesus the Lord and Savior of your life, you need to do that because without that, you ain't hearing from God. And we want you to hear from God. And so if that's you this morning, I just want you to pray this with me. Say this with me. Say, Father, I come to you right now and I realize I'm in need of a Savior. But your word says, if I would believe in my heart and confess with my mouth, Jesus as the Lord of my life, that I would be saved. So I believe in my heart and I confess with my mouth, Jesus as the Lord and the Savior of my life. In Jesus' name. Amen. So if you pray that, whether you're here or you're online, if you're online, write us, text us messages. If you're here, uh, find somebody, tell them what you just did. We've got some things we want to give to you. And I want you to say this before we go. Say this with me. I'm quick. I'm sharp. I'm smart. I'm good looking. I'm very rich. I'm a major blessing. I know the voice of God. Mighty miracles happen through my hands. I'm blessed and highly favored of the Lord and with man. Amen. My name is Ed Blanchard and this is my wife Ashley and this is Ezekiel. Uh, we call him Easy and uh, last year when uh, Chad came we prayed. We all prayed over our son Ezekiel. Uh, several months before then uh, he had gr a growth that started to uh, take place on his neck and uh, it got to be about the size of my finger and uh, the doctors were saying all kinds of things like uh, cancer, this is uh, going to be something that is inoperable. It eventually burst and um, he, he was constantly oozing liquid out of his neck and when Chad came and did his uh, conference, we, we, we just had been speaking that it would dry up and die. And uh, several weeks after uh, the conference, after we prayed for him, uh, we went for a checkup appointment and the doctor just looked at it and it was, he said, wow, it's just like it dried up and died. And uh, Exactly. And, so. and then we haven't had any problems since. Um, he has a little scar there. But I'm actually kind of glad for the scar because it reminds us how faithful God is. So. Absolutely. Yeah.